Assalamualaikum and good day. In this video, we're going to learn about Enterprise Java Bin. We're going to cover four subtopics. First, introduction to EJB, followed by Session Bin, Message Driven Bin, and finally, Entity Bin. Right, let's look what is Enterprise Java Bin. So, EJB is a specification used to develop scalable, robust, and secure enterprise application in Java. It is a specification provided by Sun Microsystem. To run EJB application, you need an application server, such as GlassFish Server, GBoss, WebLogic, or WebSphere. This uh, application server will perform lifecycle management, security, transaction management, and object pooling. EJB application is de deployed on the server, so it is called as server-side component. There are three types of EJB, NTP bin, session bin, and message-driven bin. For session bin, there is two types, stateful and stateless. Now we know EJB. Let's look what actually the difference between Java bins with EJB. Java bin is nothing but a plain Java file with some getter and setter methods in it to access and set the data. Whereas, Enterprise Java bin is totally different from plain Java bin. EJB is a complete architecture to develop highly scalable enterprise application. You need an application server in order to deploy EJB modules. Think of EJB as a service provider. EJB applications are deployed on application server like GlassFish Server, JBoss, and also WebLogic. After being published and deployed, they are ready to handle client and request response. So basically, in the table, you can see the difference between EJB and Java Bin. The final rule here states that for EJB, Programmer can more concern about the business logic as the application server manage services such as transaction and exception handling. Whereas Java Bins allow another application to use properties and methods of the bin. Now let's look at when to use EJB. When one uses EJB, the application becomes multi-tiered because of this presentation and business logic are separated. Besides, for huge application, one can rely on the services like security, transaction, and persistence provided by application server. So the developer needs to concentrate on the implementation of business logic. For example, if you are building a web service that will be accessed primarily by Java client, you want to use EJB. EJB will help you build your application faster because they automatically handle a lot of lower level details such as load balancing, clustering, and failover. Right, let's look at where the EJB fit in the system. This is basically a figure that shows the whole architecture of the system. So we start from here on the client side presentation where your Java desktop application being accessed or your J2EE client and also from the browser. So next is the server-side presentation where you put your GSP servlet on the web server. Third one is your server-side business logic where this is um, to contain your EJB container. So your EJB code will reside in the EJB container. And the final tier is your EIS, Enterprise Information System, where your database. So EGB is here, right? as well, your server-side business logic. Now, let's take a look at the first EJB, which is Session Bin. The Session Bin is an EJB Enterprise Bin component created by a client for the duration of a single client server session. A session bin performs operations for the client. Although a session bin can be transactional, it is not recoverable should a system failure occur. Session bin objects are either stateless or stateful. Let's look detail about stateless and stateful session. So, this 
screen provide you the difference between stateful and stateless session pane. So let's look at one by one. So a stateful session pane is a session pane that maintains conversational state. Stateful session pane are useful for conversational session in which it is necessary to maintain state such as instant variable values or transactional state between method calls. So these session pins are mapped to a single client for the life of that client. Right, let's look at what is stateless session pin. A stateless session pin is a session pin with no conversational state. So all instances of a particular stateless session pin class are identical. A stateless session pin and its client do not share state or identity between method calls. Okay, let's compare the example between stateful and stateless. So for stateful, the example is shopping cart where whenever that you shopping online and then you log into your shopping application, you choose all the things that you want to buy until the payment complete. So that is a stateful session being used in order to maintain the multiple method calls between the transaction. So for stateless, the example here is actually like when you have a website and then you have one contact us and then you have a form to fill in and then when you submit the form, it's actually sending a confirmation uh, feedback or um, comments for something that you want to uh, inquire. So that is an example of stateless session B. So here in the figure, you also can see that for stateful, it is one to one. So one client will use one stateful session until it complete. Whereas for stateless session, all the stateless session pin are identical, meaning that the client can pick any of the stateless session within the pool. Right. Let's move on to entity bin. An entity bin is a remote object that manages persistent data. It performs complex business logic, potentially use several dependent Java objects, and can be uniquely identified by a primary key. Entity bin are persistent because their data is stored persistently in some form of data storage, such as database. So, entity bin are more similar to a regular Java bins. So there are two types of entity bin. First one is container managed persistent. Second is bin managed persistent. When you choose to have the container to manage your persistent data for an entity bin, you need to define entity bin with container managed persistent. It is a class of entity bin with container managed persistent. It's an abstract class whose persistent data is specified as container manage persistent fields for simple data or as container manage relationship fields for relationship with other entity bins with container manage persistent. In this case, you do not have to implement some of the callback methods to manage your persistent of your bins because the container will store and reload your persistent data to and from the database. When you choose to manage your persistent data for an entity bin yourself, you define entity bin with bin manage persistent. So it is a class of entity bin with bin manage persistent is a concrete class whose persistent data is specified as bin manage persistent fields for simple data or as bin manage relationship for relationship with other entity bins and bin manage persistent. In this case, you must implement all the callback methods to manage persistent for your beans data, including storing and reloading your persistent data to and from the database. Right, let's do an example of entity bin. So for example, here in a banking application, we can consider a customer and also bank account, we can treat them as an entities. Like here in the figure, you can see that so you have 
first your session bin here control per session and this is your entity bin so customer name customer address and etc can be logically grouped together for representing the customer entity bin whereas account number total balance and etc may be logically grouped under bank account entity so this is database so entity bin will directly request and response to the database right so let's move on to message driven bin a message driven bin is a type of enterprise bin which is invoked by ejb container when it receives a message from queue or topic message driven bin is a stateless bin and it used to do tasks asynchronously all instances of a message driven bin are equivalent allowing the EJB container to assign a message to any message-driven bin instance. The container can pull these instances to allow streams of message to be processed concurrently. So this is an example of a message-driven bin. It is a simple message application. So the application client send message to the queue which was created administratively using the admin console. The Java messaging service provider, in this case, the application server, will deliver the message to the instances of the message-driven bin, which then process the messages. So you have two here. First is simple message client, whereas this is an application client that sends several messages to the queue. Next, you have the simple message EJB. So this is your simple message EJB that asynchronously receive and process the message that are sent to the queue. Alright, I think that's all for now. So please read chapter 6 for more details and example on Enterprise Java Bean. Thank you.